This model from Conrad was a new release at the Conexpo exhibition in 2017. It's a Liebherr rough terrain crane and it comes in typical Liebherr packaging. And although it appears the packaging was upside down, perhaps it was because you were standing on your head. The model is held in an expanded polystyrene tray and the first thing you notice is that it's heavy and we'll see more about that later. And there's also a bag of parts that has to be fitted. To begin with there's an instruction sheet and it lists out nearly everything in the box. But this version is slightly updated from the one that was released at Conexpo. And that's because it includes a key for tightening the main boom ram. Anyway, before we get on to talk about the model, let's hear something about the real crane. Okay, so I'm at the Liebherr stand with Randy Spike of Liebherr and we're looking at Liebherr's new RT cranes. Randy, it's been a while since Liebherr have been in this market. What's made Liebherr get back into it? Well, it just, we felt it was time to, we, we took our focus at uh, one time, we did the RTs in the 80s and 90s and our focus went to the all-terrain cranes. We feel comfortable in that with the new products we're bringing and wanted to bring something new to the market. Customers had asked, when will you get back into the RT market? And here you have it. We have a, uh, a the 11, or the 1090 is the 100 US ton. The 1100 here being the 110 US ton. The difference being the counterweights. The smaller machine has a 12 ton counterweight with a rope tell live boom and this machine the 110 has a 164 boom with a pin boom so more capacity a little bit lighter boom but we have a simpler crane and then a little more complex with the boom pinning system okay this is a competitive market isn't it so what do you think these cranes offer that maybe others don't well the, the safety we built the machine with the safety uh, global compliance with the en 13,000 the OSHA standards, and also with the Vario base, where you have a, an infinitely adjustable outrigger system. One can be out all the way, one can be short. The computer automatically interpolates where each outrigger is in the slewing angle as you come across to give you a much safer and more, uh, more capacity in certain areas, especially over the beams within 20 degrees left and right you have more strong capacities over those beams. Where the old systems, everything was built on a 360 degree and you had your weakest point would be over the side. That was your chart throughout. Now you have the strengths of those corner quadrants and it definitely increases the capacities. Okay, that's good. These cranes are being uh, previewed here for the first time. First, this is the worldwide uh, launch. When will the cranes be available for the market? If we're looking to ship units towards the end of 2017, probably into the customer's hands early 18. Okay, thanks so much, Randy. Thank you. There are quite a few parts to fit, so let's get on. And the first one we will add is a mirror for the cab. And it's a plastic one that just presses into a hole in the grab rail. It's a decent tight fit, and that's the way we like it. Next there's a mirror which appears to give a view round the back of the crane. And that's a little bit more fiddly to fit, but nothing too difficult. We head on back to the front and there's a mirror to fit on one side. And it presses into a hole and there's a locator there too to make sure that it's angled in the right direction. Just the same, there's a mirror to fit on the other side. And after having so many mirrors to fit, you begin to get good at it. Still one more to go, and here you can see the nice casting detail which forces the mirror to be in an upright position. And actually that's a nice bit of fault that's gone into the model, which helps to get it looking its best. Next we have an extra part we add to the end of the boom, and that gives an alternative for a single line hook block. Still plenty more to do, so next we go to the outriggers, and there are pads which just fit onto the bottom of the pistons. And a very nice touch on the model is the plastic replica timber mats. And one can be stored at each outrigger location. There's a single line hook block which because of its size can only be put in the holder upside down. And there's also a lattice fly jib that we can add. The fixing detail for this is convenient with a shaped clip. And although the instructions tell you to clip that onto the boom, it's actually much easier to slide it over. So there's no fiddling about trying to locate steel pins. Anyway, it's no use having a crane without a hook, so let's take some rope off the drum 
And here you see we've already added the hook block on. One thing an RT crane needs is a place to tie the hook on. And there's nothing included with the model, so here we've added a short piece of chain. Starting underneath, the detail is good with the transmission modelled. And it's nice to see a different kind of tread pattern on the big tyres. The wheels are plastic, but they look fine. And around the carrier, there are ladders and various other details. The outrigger beams seem to be tough plastic, but with an excellent colour match. And the pistons have smooth faces. The carrier deck has textured surfacing. And the cab is typically robust, with some interior detailing. At the back, the counterweight detailing seems plain, but so is the real crane. But the graphics are nice and sharp. The main boom ram is plastic, but with excellent colour. And the boom itself is nicely shaped and decorated. The hooks are metal, as are all of the sheaves. And the fly jib is a nicely made part, which looks good. Remember, if you want to support the Cranes Etc team, you can do so over on our Patreon page, and the link is in the video description. Here we are out on the rough terrain that is Cranes Etc. And the model rolls along really well because it's a nice heavy model. One axle has a degree of oscillation and both axles have a good steering angle. And as you can see, it turns really nice and sharply. And if you want to be a bit unusual, why not go for some crab steering? Let's set the crane up and put it through its paces. And to begin with, the outriggers slide out easily enough. And to lower the pistons, the best thing to do is to disconnect the pad and then just start turning with your fingers and thumbs. You can get a reasonable extension on the piston, although it will unscrew completely if you take it too far. And for that realistic look, we can put down our timber mat. And at least the outrigger pad won't punch through our mushy desktop. The system all works well and you can have the model wheels free. So let's now unhook the hook and then we can stick our boom up proudly. The method for locking the boom ram at whatever extension you want is quite clever. And you lock it by rotating the collar at the top of the jacket. And to help you do that, a clever little tool is supplied. It's specially shaped and there's a hole in the collar you can use to engage the tool. And that helps you either unlock it or lock it as you please. So this is a very nice solution and much better than trying to lock the collar with just your fingers. Telescoping the boom follows the tried and tested method. The individual sections pull out and there's a locking clip at full extension. Moving on and we need to be able to rotate the crane. And on first use that's a bit sticky on the review model. But once it gets going it's very sure footed and there's no rocking. As usual there's a tilting cap to help the operator working at height. And if you want to fly the flag for lead pair, a little flag is included. You normally see RT cranes with two hooks, so let's put the single line hook on. And once again, we go on the pull and get some rope off. We can then take it to the top of the boom and just hook it over the extra piece that we stuck on earlier. And then we've got a twin hook arrangement. Operating the winch drums on the model is done purely by using your finger or thumb. So you won't want to be doing it for hours. Let's now go for a bit more reach and we'll add on the fly jib. And because we're technically advanced at Cranes Etc, we'll do this with the boom up in the air. Just please don't try this on your job site. To fix the jib is easy and straightforward, and it just uses four small plastic bolts to make the connection. Once it's fixed, you can have it at half length or full length by opening up the swing away piece. And you lock that in place in the normal way using a pin. The next thing we need to do is to run the single line hook block. And at the boom head, there's a pull out guide wheel. And that gets used to guide the rope when the jib's at an angle. So all we do now is run the rope over the guide wheel and up to the jib head. And then we've got our fly jib ready for operation. 
There is also a nice ratchet system on the fly jib, and you can use that to either set the jib straight or at one of two different offset angles. Let's now take a look at some of the physics of the model. And firstly, it is a typically heavy Conrad model, weighing in at about 1.5 kilos or over three pounds. We'll also check the height and at full extension to the top of the boom. It's 41 inches or 104 centimeters. And to the top of the fly jib, it's 68 inches or 173 centimeters. <music> This is really a very nice model from Conrad. There's enough by way of detailing to make it interesting, but it really scores in terms of robustness and functionality. It just feels like it's been very solidly engineered. So overall, it's an excellent Liebherr model. <laughs> 